Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about keeping yourself up to date. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I am an integration analyst and work a lot in business process automation and REST services. All of my solutions work, but I'm always scared that there's a better way to do things. How does seasoned software engineers stay up to date with the evolving tech in the industry? Well, usually they read. They read a lot of newsletters, blogs. There's a lot of conferences and meetups, and then you have coworkers, even if you yourself are not necessarily pushing it to the absolute max, you might find that you're in a, a collaborative environment where people do host like learning lunches or they just share things, the articles that they've read and so forth. And I think that overall there is a very, if you, if you put yourself out there and you do look around a little bit, you will see what the latest tech is all about. Now the problem isn't to get the information per se, at least if you ask me, the problem is to know what's relevant and what's not relevant because there's more information that you that you can than you can get, get into and there's another complexity to the whole thing not all of that information even as i said not all of it is going to be irrelevant but not all of it is also is going to be accurate the 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 thing that is very hard for especially junior developers is to understand that it is not just full of experts who have the intention of making you the best possible software developer out there or trying to help their IT has people who are just who are looking to sell you something just as with everything the and there is uh, I think uh, I don't know if that if this is completely true but I've always had the sensation that in IT there is this veil where we try to put that, we pr try to put this over the eyes of all the people who work in software, and we, in many, in many cases, we're we're trying to convince our community that there is no hidden agenda when somebody goes up on a stage pitching a problem and then a solution, and then they just happen to have a company who's ha who has a subscription service or a, a SaaS service that solves that that problem. And then you have blog articles from people who are fairly well established, like respected individuals of the IT community, who also push ideas around specific problems and so forth. And then, of course, when those problems become a little bit adopted, and um, people go, "Oh, so yeah, I've been hearing about this issue." Then there are people who invent solutions to that issue. And in some cases, those issues aren't really an issue. They are theoretical issues. But people don't really have, like, uh, they, they are not, as I like to call them, meaty issues. They are not core issues. They are things that, if you solve them, that would be nice. But at the same time, they're not so critical that we can call them major problems that need taken care of. Taken care of. And that is something that usually goes missing, I think, in all of this. There's a lot, of, like, I think that the, there is a bit of a, an addiction for a lot of software developers and IT, in IT in general, where any problem, regardless of if it's like the smallest thing possible, as you can imagine, as long as it's uh, an issue and you can get some people to get excited about the solution, because that's usu usually the thing that people focus most on, if you want to get software developers excited about something, they are usually more excited about a new shiny tool that solves some problem, regardless of if that's a big problem or a small problem. They are more; in, they want new toys, and it's I don't I've never seen a community of people that uh, that is as easy to sell toys to as to as software developers. It's super easy. It's uh, it's almost a given. Regardless of what you invent, you probably will be able to find somebody who is going to buy into it. Uh, as long as you can convince them that this thing could make this process slightly better. And in some cases, uh, it's actually so bad that most people don't even understand what the problem is, but they're still willing, uh, they're very open to, li under to listening to how to solve it, even if they never understood how, what the problem is. So when it comes to staying up to date here, it really comes down to that, to 
to keep your uh, ear to the ground. One thing I will tell you, which I think is really important to understand, uh, which is is that there is a range to how relevant your skills are going to be. And that range varies a little bit on region and also, of course, on yourself and what type of work you do. You will not be able to be at the forefront in everything and know the latest thing of everything because, as I said, there's simply too much going on. You're going to have to pick some stuff. And usually I argue that the best bets for you to keep yourself up to date is to look in your region of the world and try to focus on the tooling that is relevant to you. In other words, if you know how the let's say for the sake of argument that you are a front-end developer because that's low-hanging fruit for my little discussion here or my monologue you do not have to learn react angular and Vue, and ember or like whatever you don't have to learn all the spas that's not there's like there's not really much in terms of relevance for you what you do need to know is one of them ideally the thing that is going to get you a job or get you like some type of market value in your region and really get good at that so you understand the concept of an SBA and how it works and how to work with it. If you do that, even if you decide to go to a different region where let's say that, that your specific choice here wasn't as popular or you need to switch stack or something like that, that transition is possible for you to do. The core thing that you have understood is what an SBA is and how to work with it. Because even though these tools like these different frameworks, they're different, they're, fairly, they're vastly different, and they approach pro the problem of creating an SBA from different angles, they're still solving the same sort of problem. It's similar to, okay, should you learn Redis or etcd, 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 whatever. Uh, you don't have to be self-conscious just if you don't know both, you just have to understand one in order to understand the other. It's not like they're not the same thing, but they represent a solution to the same problem. And these sorts of core skills are usually the best bets for you. Because as I said, it's not possible for you. I mean, IT is vast. I mean, if you wanted to be an operations person, are you going to learn Azure and Amazon uh, and AVS uh, and GCP? Like, it's like, are you going to learn all of it and keep up to date to, with all of their services? Come on. I, yeah, it's it's not sustainable for you to do that. Sure, you can, but then like depending on how broad you want to be, then there are a million other things that you could approach in the same way. Let's not even talk about being a backend developer or an application an application developer, where I mean the the list of languages that you could potentially have use for is absolutely enormous. So my suggestion to you is that instead of trying to keep yourself as relevant, quote unquote, as you can possibly be, try to figure out what is relevant enough for your region. What is going to matter to you in the goals that you have? If your goal is to work as a professional software developer, I promise you, you don't need to learn every single thing on the market. You just need to understand what is commonly used in order to solve the sorts of problems that I work with. And then you can, of course, indulge yourself in some area because, as I said, you may not be able to learn everything and be completely relevant in everything, but there are some things that you're most likely going to be more passionate about that you can be a little bit in the forefront of things on. And then there are other areas where you, you're slacking behind. And as long as you're aware of that, and as long as, long as you are aware of that you can't be completely outdated on things that may be relevant to your work, you can l relax. It's like you, you, you're you optimizing, instead of spreading yourself evenly, uh, your attention evenly over everything, you are warping the distribution based on your own preferences and relevancies, if that makes sense. So what I want you to take away from this is that professional software engineers keep themselves updated like everybody in an industry does. You have newsletters, blogs, you have meetups, you have coworkers, etc, etc. And there are conferences and so forth. And usually the way you go about this is that you just keep your ear to the ground and you listen out and talk to people and try to see what's going on. Just have an open, in, uh, open dialogue and an interest in what's going on in the community. There is no way for you to be completely relevant all the time in everything but the beautiful part is that you don't actually have to be on the forefront of everything it's better for you to stack your bets on the things that will make the 
biggest difference for you in your region and the role that you are seeking to to work within and then simply be aware of that in some cases you're going to be really really far ahead of some people you're going to be very relevant and in some cases you're not going to be so relevant and as long as you figure out like roughly where the ranges are and you don't fall f you don't fall woof, too far behind in something that is critical to your employment options and market value and so forth you're going to be fine so don't try to keep an even intention on everything because not everything is going to be relevant to you warp it try to uh, optimize for the things that makes the biggest difference to you and your career and just make sure that you don't miss out on basic knowledge in something that is very important for you when the market changes. Have a great day.